In this video, I'll be going over the comments on this post where I asked my viewers to share which floor or chamber of the Spiral Abyss they're currently struggling with, as well as their character roster and any key builds that they have. I'll provide my personal opinions and some advice on how I might overcome these obstacles. For the sake of keeping this video at a reasonable length, I was only able to address a few key points for each user, so I just want to apologize in advance if I didn't answer all of your questions. Even so, I'm hoping that everyone watching can learn something new from the tips I cover in this video. First off, we have a user who goes by Kamikaze, and they said, I only struggle with floor 12, and the things I struggle most with are the mechanical array and wolf lord. I mostly struggle when the ruined sentinels are active. I think part of my problem is my rotations. Bennett's burst will end a few seconds before Skara's skill ends, but Xingqiu's burst will still be going after Skara's still ends. Should I be staying in Skara's skill for its whole duration, or should I switch out to recharge Bennett's burst when it ends? I'll first talk about the rotation on the Wanderer team. In general, I order my rotation so that the longest lasting ability comes first, which is Xingqiu's burst in this team. I would open the rotation with his skill, burst, and skill, making sure to catch all of those particles before you swap away from him. With the ER you have on him currently, you should be able to recharge his burst almost completely with two casts of his skill. Since your Sack Sword is only R1, you probably aren't getting the reset proc consistently. I recommend swapping him to an ER Sans to compensate on those rotations where you aren't able to get two skill casts. Then we have Bennett's Burst and Fischl's Oz, which both last 12 seconds. In this case, it makes more sense to put Bennett first since he can buff Fischl's attack, and Fischl can snapshot this buff when she summons Oz. The reason we don't make the same argument for Xingqiu is because his burst does not snapshot, so there isn't a big benefit to putting Bennett before Xingqiu. Finally, we swap to Wanderer, who is our on-field driver. I don't think it's necessary to end his skill early, because you're going to be limited by Xingqiu's skill cooldown anyway, which is about 22 seconds when you consider the sack reset. But after he lands, I do try to squeeze in one more Bennett skill. That leads me to my second point, which is Bennett's energy recharge and burst uptime. I noticed that you have a Skyward Blade on him, it's a great weapon for him, high base attack with an ER substat, but in a hyper carry team like this where most of your field time is being used up by another character, you really only have time to use Bennett's skill maybe two times. If you're using Skyward Blade, you usually need three skill casts to recharge his burst, which means you need to wait an additional four seconds at the end of the rotation for that extra skill cast. This is where I recommend a Favonia Sword on Bennett instead. The extra energy that you get from its procs is enough to recharge his burst with just two skill casts, so it allows you to keep this tight 22 second rotation. Of course, the trade-off is that you're losing about 150 base attack compared to the Skyward Blade, which means your attack buff is a little weaker. But overall, that faster rotation does end up giving us more DPS in the long run. The PMA should enter its invulnerability phase right as you finish your second rotation, or roughly around the 9-10 mark. For those who don't know already, when this happens, you need to look for the Ruin Sentinel that has this golden ring around it. This is the Sentinel that you need to defeat to break the boss's invulnerability, so focus all of your damage on that one specifically. When we put all this together, we can clear the PMA in about 90 to 100 seconds. This leaves us at least 80 seconds to clear the second half, which should be doable with that Shao team you have. I did adjust my character's builds to match yours as closely as possible. It's not exact, but I did at least try to get the attack and CV in the same ballpark. Hopefully this makes it a little easier to crack the PMA and also just to execute that Wanderer team in general. Thanks again for sharing your roster with us and good luck. Next up, we have a viewer who goes by Snock and they said, My only struggle is floor 12 in general. I can't pass the second floor, I die in it or run out of time. And I know you didn't mention this in your comment, but I know this because we spoke on Discord, but I believe the problem you were having specifically is that you wanted to take your child national team into the second half of the third chamber, but you kept dying trying to get past the Wolf Lord with this team. First, let's talk about Bennett, who is of course your team's healer. I see that you have a lot of ER on him, which is awesome. Even with this much ER, maintaining uptime on the burst can be difficult against the Wolf Lord because you don't have that many opportunities to hit him. My advice here is to save at least 1 or 2 seconds at the end of each rotation to use Bennett's skill on the Wolf Lord before he flies away. Also, since he can only heal one character at a time, make sure to rotate through each of your characters at least once while his burst is active. Each character should be on the field for at least 1 or 2 seconds so that they are receiving those heals. If you feel like you're still not getting enough healing out of him, you can also try replacing his Goblet to HP and his Circlet to HP or Healing Bonus. Now let's talk about the Golden Wolf Lord. I'm assuming you're losing most of your health and time during his shield phase since it takes a long time to break those skulls without any geo in your team. 
The key tip I want to share here is that you should be hiding behind the skulls when you're trying to break them. Projectiles can't pass through the skulls, so you can use them as a kind of natural barrier to protect you during this shield phase. Obviously during the earthquake attack, you do have to move around to dodge the AoE, and when he uses the laser attack, don't try to run away from it, simply dash through it as it's about to hit you. You gain iframes while you're dashing, so you won't take any damage for those few frames where you're passing through the laser. If you do still get hit and take a lot of damage, you can use Bennett's burst once to heal you back up, just know that you won't be able to recharge his energy again until the boss is stunned. Aside from this, just keep chipping away at the shield using your elemental skills. It will take a long time since you don't have Geo, but the payoff will be worth it. Child National going into this third chamber is really strong since it has great AoE damage, grouping, and healing, all really good things to have when we're fighting these Rift Towns. I actually don't have Child, so I'm using Yelan instead, but I do think Child should do just as well, if not better, because his AoE Hydra application is crazy fast and strong. I hope this makes it a little easier to survive the Wolf Lord and get that Child National team into Chamber 3. Thanks again for sharing your roster and good luck! Next we have a user who goes by Gary Jukes. They said, Hi, I'm stuck on floor 12-3, can't beat it within the time to get 3 stars. Usually use Raiden, Kokomi, Bennett, Shangling first chamber, and Hu Tao, Xing Chu, Zongli, and Albedo. The first thing that immediately pops out to me is that I would definitely swap those teams around, and this is for two reasons. One, that Hu Tao team doesn't have a healer, which is going to make it really tough to survive against the Rift Hound's corrosion debuff since corrosion damage does cut through shields. And two, most of Hu Tao's damage is single target, so it's naturally going to take much longer to clear out a chamber like this where you have to fight 15 enemies. Hu Tao's single target damage is much better suited for the first half, where you have just one boss to fight. Likewise, Raiden's AoE damage combined with Kokomi and Bennett's healing is going to give you a much easier time in the second half. The main challenge with this setup is the same as what we saw with Snock, which is getting past the Wolf Lord without a Geo character on the team. Just stay behind the skulls to protect yourself from projectiles, keep yourself healthy with Kokomi's skill, and just keep chipping away at those skulls using all of your elemental skills. It should be a little easier with this team because Kokomi provides healing with her skill and it deals damage over time so it can chip through those skulls a little faster. After reaching chamber 3 with this team, one other issue that I faced was the overloaded reactions between Raiden and Shangling. Overloaded is a bit notorious for scattering your enemies everywhere, so it can be problematic when you're fighting multiple light enemies like this. One thing I like to do to mitigate this is pull all the enemies towards one of the walls and try to squeeze them between the wall and myself. The wall will help prevent them from getting knocked too far back, which helps us deal that AoE damage. Even with this tip, if you find that this Overload Raiden team is just not working out, a couple other teams that I think are worth trying are a Ganyu Freeze team or a Shao team. Both have excellent AoE damage and you do have great healers to pick from since you're able to get away with just Zongli in the first half. Unfortunately, I don't have Ganyu or Xiao myself, but I do think they're both really strong on this second half of Chamber 3. Hopefully at least one of these setups does work for you. Thank you for sharing your roster with us and good luck! Next up, we have El Remito, who says, I'm also struggling with floor 12 too. I went for an Ayaka Freeze on part 1 and a Rational with Zongli instead of Xing Chu on part 2. I thought that Zongli might not be optimal to break the wolf's skull since his pillar doesn't tick that fast. Maybe Ningguang would be more consistent. I also have Nahida, but I haven't tried her yet. I'll start by talking about Zongli. He is actually one of the fastest shield breakers for the Wolf Lord shield phase, but he is also probably the hardest one to execute, so I'm not surprised that you might be struggling with this. You use Zongli's tap skill, and you have to place the pillar at exactly the right distance from the skull, so that the summoning of the pillar takes off two geo units from the skull initially. Then the pulse from the pillar deals one more geo unit of damage and breaks the skull. If you place it right, you can just start walking to the next skull, which is why this is so fast. The hard part here is that if you place it too far from the skull, you miss out on those two initial geo units. You have to wait for all the pulses to break the skull, which takes a really long time. If you place it too close to the skull, the pillar disintegrates and you have to wait for the cooldown to place another one. You can also cheat on one of the skulls by using your burst to break it in one shot. There's also an easier way to do it, but it is a bit slower. You use this hold skill on the first skull, again making sure not to place the pillar too close so it doesn't disintegrate. Then you use his burst on the second skull, and finally use his hold skill again on the last skull. Your pillar placement doesn't have to be as precise for this method, but it is quite a bit slower because you need to wait for the pillars to pulse four times on the first and last skulls. 
Ningguang is definitely a more forgiving option. You can either use two normal attacks and one cast of her skill or a charged attack when you have all of your shards. You will probably lose some damage from your rational team unless your Ningguang is really well built, so I will leave it up to you whether you want to stick with Zhongli and learn that pillar placement or switch to Ningguang. You also mentioned that you have Nahida and I also noticed that you have Kokomi, so I do want to point out that a Nahida Hyper Bloom team is really good in this second half, not just for Chamber 2 but all three chambers. If you're willing to convert Raiden into a full EM build, or if you have a high level Kuki who is already using an EM build, you can make a really solid Hyper Bloom team here. If you do choose to go down this route, I would borrow Kokomi from the Ayaka team because you do need that consistent Hydro application and strong healing for this side, and then put Xingqiu Diona into the Ayaka team instead. I hope one of these setups work out for you. Hopefully this only pillar tip alone is enough for you to clear 12 too. Regardless of which team comps you end up with, thanks again for sharing your roster and good luck. Next, we have Emily the Strange, who said, I use Raiden National and some variation of Aggravate Kaching, struggling with getting more than two stars in this version's floor 12. Since I don't have enough time to cover all of the chambers in this video, I'll defer to my chamber-specific guide videos for those tips. Without knowing specifics about what you're struggling with, I think one thing that could be generally helpful for you is going over the rotations for your teams. Something that I say a lot when I'm giving advice is that the Spiral Abyss is a marathon. Since you're fighting these long fights back to back to back, being able to execute your rotations repeatedly and consistently is the foundation of a successful Spiral Abyss run. First, I'll go over a Raiden National rotation that I think is pretty easy to remember and execute. Just like we saw earlier with Kamikaze, the general rule I'll follow is to use the longest lasting abilities first and work our way down. Keeping this in mind, we open with Raiden's skill, followed by Xingqiu's skill and burst. Then we go Bennett's burst and skill, and also Xiangling's burst and skill, making sure to stay inside Bennett's burst so that we snapshot his attack buff. Finally, we put Raiden on the field and use her burst, following up with a bunch of normal attacks to apply Xingqiu's burst as much as possible. We stay on Raiden until her electro infusion wears off, or roughly when her burst cooldown is at around 9 seconds. Then we end the rotation with Raiden's skill to lead us into the next rotation. Before I start the next rotation, I like to squeeze in one more cast of Bennett's skill and swap to Shangling to make sure her energy is topped off. At this point, when we swap to Xingqiu, we should see that his skill and burst are ready to go again and we can repeat the same rotation. Going into the second rotation, notice how all of my character's bursts are recharged. This allows me to replay the exact same rotation in the same sequence and deal just as much damage as I did in my first rotation. If any one of these bursts are not up, not only do we lose a bunch of damage in the second rotation, but our burst cooldowns can become off sync, which also ruins our future rotations. This takes me to the second key piece to executing a proper rotation, and that is having enough energy recharge on your characters. If you look at my characters' builds in the video description, you'll notice that they're not super optimized, but the one thing that they all have in common is an abundance of energy recharge. In a team like Raiden National where you do need every character's burst to make the rotation work, hitting your ER threshold is the most important part of your builds. This could mean using an ER Sands, an ER Weapon, or adding more Favonius weapons to your team. Really quickly, I'll go over the Aggravate Kaching rotation that I like to use. I open with Zhongli's Hold Skill into Traveler Skill and Burst, then I summon Oz and use Kaching's Skill, Burst, and Skill into one charged attack. Then I swap back to Traveler to help recharge that expensive burst, and finally end the rotation with Kaching's Skill and maybe two or three more charged attacks. Again, the key point I want to make here is that being able to repeat your rotations consistently is more important than maximizing the damage of a single rotation. Even if your builds aren't super optimized, being able to output that continuous DPS is ultimately what you need to get through that marathon that is the Spiral Abyss. Regardless of which specific chamber you're stuck on, I hope this helps make your Spiral Abyss runs a little smoother. Thank you for sharing your roster with us and good luck! Last but certainly not least, we have Charles Fernandez, and they said, Hello, I'm struggling clearing floor 12, chamber 1 with 3 stars. I did it with last reset, but only because I got really lucky. I've tried clearing again with the same team, Raiden National, and it always left me with barely enough time to finish the second half with Ganyu, Diona, Mona, Kazuha, hoping to see which characters I need to start building and which artifacts I need to replace on my current builds. Would also be nice to receive some suggestions which characters to pull next. Since you are using Raiden National for the PMA, I'm hoping that the advice about the rotations that I just shared for Emily the Strange can also apply to you. 
Your builds look very solid to me, it's pretty clear that you know which artifact sets and main stats to use on each character. The team comps you've picked out and the characters you've prioritized are also great choices. I think a lot of it comes down to practicing those rotations and hitting those ER thresholds. The only suggestion I have is to invest more in Xiangling, starting with getting all of her artifacts to plus 20 and leveling her weapon to level 90. Xiangling is the primary damage dealer in the Rided National team, so I always recommend prioritizing her build over everybody else. When I tried running this team with similar stats, I was still able to clear the PMA in a reasonable amount of time, but I did feel like Xiangling's ER was a little low. I usually had to spend one or two extra cycles on Bennett to recharge her burst, which slowed down the rotation quite a bit. I do see that you have ER substats on all of your pieces, which is awesome, so getting all of those to plus 20 will hopefully get you two or three more ER rolls so that she can comfortably recharge her burst on every rotation. I do recognize that my constellations are much higher than yours, so I did remove the damage goblets on Xiangling and Xingqiu to compensate for that a little bit. Even then, those constellations do make a huge difference, so don't be discouraged if your damage output doesn't match mine exactly. As for which characters to pull next, one option that I think could be good is Kokomi. This gives you access to a really strong Nahida Raiden right Hyper Bloom team, which can usually be flexed into either side of the Spiral Abyss. Another option that could work is Hu Tao. The really nice thing about Hu Tao is that she doesn't compete for healers, which are usually the bottleneck for building team comps. For example, the healers you have built are Bennett and Diona, so you're mostly limited to Hyper Carry, National, and Freeze teams. And more importantly, you can't run Hyper Carry and National at the same time because both of those team families use Bennett as their healer. Hu Tao gives you a third team comp option without taking away any of those healers, so she doesn't disrupt your existing team comps for the most part. She does take away Xing Chu from Raiden National, but then you could just use Hyper Carry Raiden on that half instead. Those are the main pieces of advice I have for you. Hopefully just improving that Xiangling build and practicing that Raiden National rotation is enough to buy you more time for the second half. Thank you for sharing your roster and builds, and good luck. Alright, we finally made it. Sorry for the super long video, I hope that was helpful not just for the people who left those comments on that post, but also for anyone watching who might be facing similar challenges. Again, I'm sorry I wasn't able to answer all of your questions, especially for those of you who are struggling with multiple chambers. Just for the sake of time, I did try to limit my answers to 2-3 to three minutes per person. Also sorry if you missed this post or didn't get a chance to drop your question there. Depending on how well received this video is, I might do this again for the 3.4 Spiral Abyss, so keep your eye out for that one. I just want to say one last thank you to everyone who commented and shared your rosters with us. You provided a starting point for what I hope was an educational experience for everybody. Everyone good luck on your Spiral Abyss runs, and as always, thank you so much for watching.